Today we're going to set up your drawing for your isometric view of the tool holder. So in order to do that, uh, we have to change the way that we're looking at the part. So we're going to be using 30 and 60 degree angles to draw this isometric view or this pictorial view. And what we need to do is go down to Snap and right click and go to Settings. And right here, we're going to go to Isometric Snap. That's the first thing you want to do when you start doing this. Now check out how the angles, how your cursor is angled or your crosshair. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw it off to the side over here where we can see the dimensions so that we're not going to screw a drawing up. We're going to draw it over here. So um, notice that there is only one angle that I can draw in right now. I can either draw vertically or I can draw at this 30 degree angle from zero. But if I toggle F5, it toggles every different angle. So when I say ISO top, ISO right, as ISO left, I'm going to draw an ellipse. And the way that we're going to draw circles is with an ellipse. So when I select ellipse, right now, since I have ISO snap on, this is the uh, option that I get. And we don't get that unless we have ISO snap on. So I'm going to type I for ISO circle. I'm going to select my center, and then you just simply type in D for diameter and say what size it's going to be. So let's say that this is a diameter 1, and if I make another one over here, I for ISO circle. Let's do that again. Ellipse, I for ISO circle before you ever set it down. And notice that there's an order of operation. If I toggle F5 here, notice that this would be on the left side of a cube if I had a cube here. This would be on the right, this would be on the left. Let's make one more, and I can put it right here. And I toggle F5, um, and let's do that again. I have to type I before I set this down. I do that every time. So now I might make a diameter of one here as well. So this would be ISO top, ISO right, ISO left. The things that you want to know about isometric is that you cannot fillet or chamfer or offset in isometric. You need to copy and translate. You need to draw the full diameters and then trim them out or the radii. And you need to, to offset the sides for a chamfer. So when I start this I'm going to start with a bounding box. So I'm going to start with a line and I'm going to draw toggling F5 to go up and down. Your vertical lines are always going to be vertical. So I'm going to put 2.75 in using direct entry and get the overall height. Toggle F5 for it to come toward me and the overall width or length in this part is 7. And then I can go back up 2.75 again and then C for close and that works just like anything else. Now I like to just grab these and copy them from, let's say, this point, end point, the width of the part, if I toggle F5 again, I can just offset that at a certain space. And that width of that part is 2.5 inches. I'm going to draw a line and get my four corners in. Now we know that the tool holder is baseline dimensioned, so there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of dimensions that we can just copy and translate lines back. So I know that if I started with the top plate here, I know that the top plate is 3.5 from the end of this line. So I can grab this. And what I like to do is I like to copy for a plane. So I'm going to copy this from this point back in this direction. Don't let it snap to anything. Drag it all the way beyond. And you drag it back 3.5 inches. That's done. So there's my top plane right there. Now I'm going to draw the front plane here, and that's one inch thick. So I'm going to copy again. Remember that you can't offset. Copy this one from here, toggling F5, down one inch. Now the next one that I'm going to do, and so now I have my one inch thick plate. I can copy this one because this notch is offset two inches. So from here, and toggling F5 this direction, 2 inches. And I can do the same thing with this one, copying from here, or any point in space really. As long as you have direct entry and F8 on, you're, you're in good shape. So 0.75 from that edge. And then if I wanted to copy the same thing from the same spot, if this is 0.75 plus 1, that would be 1.75 in this direction. All right, and now I can start using trim. I'm going to hit enter for select all and trim from the back to the front. 
And if I get too many lines in here, it gets confusing, so I like to trim them out as, as quickly as I can. Now I'm going to have some vertical lines coming down here that go down, toggling F5, and just let them go a little bit long, and then we can trim them back. All these lines are going to be the same length because that plate is the same thickness all the way through. So I'm going to copy this one from here to here. And then I need a line to show the underside of that cut there to there. And now I can trim this out. So it starts, it starts getting visible as you go. If you do little pieces at a time, it's a lot easier. I know I need to copy this one down. And this is the top of the plate, and this is the bottom of the plate, so I don't even have to tell it how far. Now I'm going to use this line, though, and I'm going to copy it back to start getting my angles set. So if I zoom out here, I want 1 at 2.75, copy. Let's say from this edge, toggle F5 to go back, back 2.75. And then I'm going to have another one from that point at 3.25. So now I can I can draw all of them at the same time. And I could do another one at 4. So there are my three lines, 2.75, 3.25, and 4. So I see the top of my plate I've already got. But there is an angle underneath here, and I'm simply going to draw a line, and the object snaps work. So I'm going to draw a line from point to point, and now I can delete these two lines out. But this bottom line, this one at 4, needs to be there for a certain extent up one inch. So I'm going to copy all the lines that make that plane. And it's a lot easier to think about like that. So I'm going to copy that one from here. And I'm going to travel up one inch. And now at the intersection of this, I'm going to go to the back of that. Does that make any sense? Right here is the intersection of this one. And I'm going to connect it. So I'm going to draw a line from this intersection to this intersection. And now I've got that angle. So I've got to trim some things out because it starts getting confusing. Trim from the end down always. That makes it a lot easier. Trim this one back all the way to there. Trim this one down, this one down. Starting to look like a part now. And I can trim this one back. Get that one out of the way. This one out of the way. Now that's starting to look good. Okay, I don't need this one. I don't need this one. Now I'm going to copy. I can just grab this line. I can copy it from this point to this point. And that shows me that bottom plane there. So now I'm going to trim this out. And there's also another line that I need. I need a line from here. I'm toggling F5. And that's going to be two and a half inches in the width of this part, 2.5. Or I could have copied that one from here to here because that's the overall width of the part. The reason that I wanted this one is I'm going to move it now from this point. I'm going to move it back 2.25 inches right there, 2.25 inches. Now this is the center of my diameter for my boss or my cylindrical protrusion and my hole and the fillet. So now I'm going to draw an ellipse. I for isocircle. All your circles will be ellipses. And D for diameter. 0.75 for the hole. The next one. I for isocircle before you ever snap the center point. D for diameter. 1.25 inches. I'm going to make one more. I for isocircle. Find the center. And then I can come straight out to the midpoint there, and that gives me the exact radius that I needed. So now I don't need this line or this line because they're going to be um, replaced with a circular reference on the end. Don't need this one either. Now I'm going to draw some lines. Now, um, AutoCAD has a problem with quadrants and tangents. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to try and force a tangency here. There it goes. And now I needed this line right here so that I could get that. So I'm going to copy. This is the same width. I'm going to copy this one here. I'm sorry. I'm going to copy the same thing from this point to this point. Should have left that line there. And then I'm going to 
I'm going to make a line from here to shift right click force the tangency now I'm going to delete this one out and this one this one I don't need anymore this one I don't need and I'm going to trim the rest of these back so I trim this one I trim this out trim this one and now I'm going to copy this one from the top of the plate to the bottom of the plate and I'm going to draw a line from the quadrant F5 straight down and I'm going to let me see I need to copy this don't I I need to copy this from the top of the plate right here to the bottom of the plate so notice that you can select points relative so I'm going to trim this out a bit I needed that little bit of curve on the bottom here and now I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to copy them from just the height of that boss or cylindrical protrusion. I'm going to copy up in the Y 0.25 inches and now I'm going to delete the bottom one out because we won't see that and we don't normally draw hidden lines in isometrics. And there's the sides of my cylinder. Now I'm going to trim these things that would be hidden. I'm going to trim those out from the back to the front. Uh oh, Control Z undoes right in the middle of the command. And there we go. So the last thing that we need now is we need our fillets. And we know that those fillets, the center of the fillets are exactly the, the fillet radius. So I'm going to copy this line from here over the radius is 0.5 and I'm going to copy this one from here the radius is also 0.5 coming to the inside and notice that I dragged all the way past the part I can copy both of these at the same time because they're going in the same direction from here toggling F5 and going back 0.5 inches and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a center point an intersection for my center line now I'm going to draw an isocircle type I for isocircle from a ellipse and if I drug this out that would be what direction that's ISO left toggle F5 ISO top that's what I want and I could drag it out to that point and I know that that radius is 0.5 I can grab this one and I can copy it from this intersection to this intersection and now that's looking good so now I'm going to delete these out because I don't want to trim them all away and now I'm going to start trimming my fillets trim this one Now my corners are going to go away, aren't they, because I'm curving this. So one thing that you want to think about is relative from the top of the plate to the bottom. So I'm going to copy these from the top of the plate to the bottom of the plate. And then that'll make a perfect fillet for me down here. So I'm going to trim these out. I'm going to delete this one. I'm trimming this out as well. And I'm going to grab this one and delete it. And I'm going to draw a line and I can grab from tangency to tangency and what you want to do when you're drawing the tangents quadrant sometimes it's hard to understand which one you want so if you zoom way in notice how jagged the edges get um, your graphics card is running at a very low speed but if I trim this out I see that they are connected so if I zoom in and everything's jagged it doesn't look like it's connected you can view region all and it will bump your graphics card and you'll have a smooth transition now you're going to grab this and move it into this point of the of the drawing and you're done with your isometric now that we learn to uh, make a, a box and a fillet and a hole Let's go on down. We would offset and trim out like we did for um, for our notch. And then if we had a chamfer, we would offset the two different distances. Now you can't use angles on this either. So you're actually going to have to draw it in 2D, measure the angle in the X and Y coordinates, and then apply that. Okay, this is isosnap. This is where we went to um, get us into that 30, 60 degree angle cross here. 
Okay, so ISO circles is what we're going to use. You're going to select an ellipse. I for ISO circle before you ever select the center. I many times make a mistake by selecting a center first. Okay, and that's how you make fillets like we did before. But let's get to the real guts of this project right here. We're going to be looking at making this T connector isometric drawing. And it's going to step you, put you through this step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ask you guys to step through the book with me here. I'm going to pull this to the side. I'm going to draw a line. It doesn't matter where you start. And I'm going to make that five inches long in isosnap. Now, I know that it says that the center, the vertical line, is going to be drawn at 2.5. So if I draw a line right now and I snap to the midpoint, that would be at 2.5. And I'm going to toggle F5 to get the correct angle. And I'm going to drag that down and make that 3 inches. Now the next thing I'm going to do is it says draw a 1 inch diameter and a 2 inch diameter ellipse or isocircle at 3 endpoints as shown. So I'm going to be smart and lazy and I'm going to select the endpoint. Uh oh. Remember what I do? I just do this and I forget to hit ISO circle. So I'm going to select the endpoint here. D for diameter, 1 inch. And I'm going to do the same thing. I for ISO circle. Selecting the endpoint. D for diameter at a 2 inch. All right, and I know that these are the same size, so I'm going to be smart and lazy and I'm going to copy from endpoint to endpoint to endpoint since they're all the center of the two circles. Let's go to the next uh, thing that it talks about. It talks about finding the tangencies of this. I find it a lot easier if I know that this diameter is 2, I could grab this and copy this 1 inch offset each side. So I'm going to use a copy, copy this from any point in space. It doesn't matter. It's relative to that point in space, how far you drag it. I'm going to drag it out 1 inch this direction and back this way, one inch this direction, and do the same thing. Any point in space, one inch this direction, and one inch this direction. And now I don't need these center lines anymore. Now I'm going to start to trim this all out. I like to use a bounding box. Alright, and so now I've kind of got some of the starts of this um, Isometric. I'm going to go ahead and extend these lines. I kind of need these again because I need to draw this angle. Now this angle was 37 degrees, so I have to go to um, right-click on Settings at Snap and take off isomet, uh, ISO Snap. Take that off and make it rectangular snap again. I have to draw this in 2D to find out how long that angle is going to be. So I know that I have a line here and that's going to be 2 inches tall above the T and from here I'm going to be 37 degrees from horizontal. See how that dimension is drawn from the west? So I'm going to take off ortho and 37 degrees from the west if I kind of draw my cursor over here I see that I'm going to be above 90 degrees. So I'm going to subtract 37 from 180. So I'll draw this long let's say 3 inches tab and 80 minus 37 is 143 degrees. And now I'm going to copy this one from here with ortho on over here, 2 inches, and I'm going to draw that thing. So there's my 37 degree angle. I'm going to draw a line up here. I always check my angle. So I'm going to use an angular dimension, 37 degrees. So what I want to know is how far is it from here to here. I know that this is 2 and then I could connect the dots. So let's throw a linear dimension on here. 0.4928. So now I'm going to draw a line from this endpoint 2 inches up. I'm going to draw a line from this line from this endpoint 0.4928. And now I'm going to connect the dots. And that's how you're going to get angles. And it's not automated like everything else. So it's, you have to think about it a little bit more. And you have to uh, be in, you don't have to be in isometric to draw this because you're just drawing straight lines and you're connecting the dots. But now I'm going to go ahead and go back to snap. 
settings and I'm going to set ISO snap again because I want to copy this front plane to the back plane. So if you look um, on down through your pages, it's actually going to show you how to do what to copy. But I got a little ahead of myself. I need to put some fillets in here. So I'm going to copy my fillets are going to be um, 0.38 radius. Right? So I'm going to copy these two. These are in the same plane from here out 0.3a. I'm going to copy these two from here 0.38. I'm going to copy these two from here up 0.38 and I'm going to copy these two copy from here down 0.38 now I've got some center marks for my circles to make my uh, fillets with so I'm going to make a ellipse eye for iso circle and now if I select on the center and I select this endpoint of this line that's going to be perfect for my uh, radius. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to have to draw it over and over again. I'm smart and lazy. Okay, and now I'm going to delete out all these construction lines because they're really not helping me any. And I would have to trim all those out as well. Delete. And now I'm going to trim. I'm going to select bounding boxes for this. Okay, now I have all my fillets, and I'm going to grab all this, I'm going to copy it, but I don't want to do that because if you go to step 7, it shows you exactly, or figure 7.30, it shows you exactly what to grab because you won't see anything behind a lot of these lines. So I'm just going to grab the bottom two, this, and everything on the top you're going to see because you're going to project it up and out, and there's a little step right there. And that one and you know it's funny but you will see these holes in the back so I'm going to copy these and we'll just trim out what won't be seen so I'm going to copy from any point in space you can copy from here toggle F5 and it is what one inch thick so now if I just draw lines I can draw a line from point to point uh oh what happened there I can select this grab this grip move it up and I need another line here and I won't have any lines here because it's smooth I need another line from tangent to tangent there sometimes it'll be a quadrant sometimes it'll be a tangent you just have to zoom in and find out what's going to be right and you'll see that if you if it's not totally smooth and it has a little bump you need to change out and be the be the other type so I won't have this one Actually, I won't need any of these holes, will I? So now let's trim this out. Trim this out. I don't really need any of this. Trim this from the end back so that I don't have a tail that that isn't crossing anything that I would have to delete. And I can delete this one out. And now I have my ISO T ISO connector drawing done.